Hey there, folks. I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. Well, folks, Easter is here again. You know, I was originally going to blog Rankin Bass's The Easter Bunny is Coming to Town this year, but then I re-looked at my request list, and then I just remembered that Marisol Barobia, who previously asked me to blog the Rugrats movie, Harriet the Spy, and Babe, asked me to look at a recent Looney Tunes movie. Now, I don't need to remind you guys who the Looney Tunes are. Mostly everybody knows that they are some of the most classical cartoon characters in the world, next to Mickey Mouse and the rest of the Disney gang. And I'm kind of disappointed about the whole Pepe Le Pew controversy recently. Anyway, in the past, I did blog films like Tiny Toon Adventures, How I Spent My Vacation, which, believe it or not, foreshadowed a certain date coming up shortly, along with Looney Tunes Back in Action and Space Jam. Speaking of which, I'm deeply excited for the upcoming sequel this summer. However, does anyone know about the Looney Tunes show? Well, this is a cartoon series which ran for two seasons, from 2011 to 2014, for a total of 26 episodes. And in my eyes, while I did see a couple episodes, one time when I was on a plane ride to New York City back in 2016, this series is... okay. It just doesn't really hold a candle to the old Looney Tunes shorts that Frizz Freeling made. However, the Looney Tunes show did have a direct-to-DVD movie after the show ended, which is what Marisol asked me to look at today. Released to DVD on August 4th, 2015, the movie is Looney Tunes Rabbit's Run. So, in this movie, Lola Bunny is a perfume saleswoman who perfects her own fragrance thanks to the introduction of a rare flower provided by her landlord, Speedy Gonzalez, which, unfortunately, the military also want to get their hands on. Lola meets cab driver Bugs Bunny, who longs for anonymity, only to be thrust into the spotlight when he and Lola both end up on the FBI's most wanted list, hunted by federal agent Elmer Fudd. What neither Lola or Bugs know is that the flower and the perfume turns people and objects invisible. So, what do I think of this movie? Well, in my eyes, this was fun, zany, and hilarious. But not perfect, though. But let's move on to Mustang Notes. The movie was directed by Jeff Sergei, who's not only known for directing the Looney Tunes show, but he was also a supervising animator on Space Jam and a lead animator on Looney Tunes Back in Action. It was also the first Looney Tunes direct-to-video movie in nine years since Bah Humduck, A Looney Tunes Christmas. Now, what are my thoughts on the animation? Well, while it does respect the style of the Looney Tunes show, it's still not as timeless as the old cartoon shorts. But, what makes up for it is not only the plot, but also the comedy, which is very hilarious at times. Same goes for a few of the chase sequences. And I thought the final climax in space may have been kind of rushed, but still pretty clever. And that's basically all I got for Mustang notes. So let's move on to the characters and the voice actors who brought them to life. Our main character, Lola Bunny, is voiced by Looney Tunes show staff writer and producer Rachel Romrus, who had a minor role in Scooby-Doo and Kiss Rock and Roll Mystery. To me, like in the show, Lola is shown as somewhat less intelligent, more clueless to her surroundings and situations, and of course, she talks abnormally fast, and she tends to obsess over bugs. Also, in this movie, Lola is tired of working at the Acme department store perfume counter, and she dreams of making her own perfume. But after she unawaringly 
creates invisibility from a rare Mexican flower, Lola goes on the run from the FBI and she's determined to get her new perfume to Paris. Next we come to Looney Tunes mascot and star Bugs Bunny, voiced by Jeff Bergman, who was a stand-in for George O'Hanlon and Mel Blanc in the Jetsons movie after their deaths. And he also provides the voices for Daffy Duck, Pepe Le Pew, and Foghorn Leghorn. Anyway, in this movie, Bugs Bunny works as a taxi driver, and to me, while Bugs has the same level of humor and cleverness from the old days, there are times in this movie where Bugs is a tad paranoid due to him being wanted by the FBI, and he doesn't really want to help Lola, but as the film progresses, he starts to soften up to her. Next up, we have Lola's employer, Giovanni Jones, voiced by Michael Serrato. To me, Giovanni is a pretty arrogant kind of guy, and I didn't really like it when he fired Lola for constantly convincing customers that the perfume sold there isn't good enough for them. But later, Giovanni plots to steal the perfume that Lola created and take all the credit for himself. Next we have Lola's landlord, Speedy Gonzalez, voiced by Fred Armisen, who voiced Brainy Smurf in the live-action Smurfs movies, and he voiced one of the four shades of awesome in Princess Elena's TV finale, Coronation Day. Now to me, while Speedy doesn't really have a big role in this movie, all I can say is that Speedy is the one responsible for stealing the rare flower from the Mexican jungle. Next we come to the main villain, Marvin the Martian, voiced by Damon Jones. To me, I consider Marvin as the laughable type of villain. And in this movie, his evil plan is to use Lola's invisibility perfume to make all of Earth invisible so that he can have a good view of Venus, which to me is a very bizarre motivation. Lola and Bugs' pursuers in this movie consist of FBI agent Elmer Fudd, voiced by Billy West, Yosemite Sam, voiced by Maurice LaMarche, and Marvin's henchman, Cecil Turtle, voiced by Jim Rash, whom you may remember from Disney's Sky High and Red Shoes and the Seven Dwarfs. And now let's move on to my final words. Overall, Looney Tunes Rabbit's Run is a pretty decent animated comedy movie. Sure, it's not as timeless as Space Jam, Looney Tunes Back in Action, or even the original Looney Tunes shorts, but still, the animation is pretty good, the comedy and the story is fun, and the characters are memorable and funny, and of course, the voice acting is absolutely spot on. So, if you folks are fans of the Looney Tunes show, or even the Looney Tunes characters, then be sure to check out this movie, and I think this is a movie that you should share with your family and your children. I give this film an 85% out of 100. Well, that's all folks. Be sure to join me next time after I get my final COVID-19 vaccine because for my next episode, we're going to go inside the human body. Until then, wish me well viewers, Mustang power, and have a very happy Easter.